welcome. You are here with Dr. Nilda Perez with Business Foresight, creating strategies towards your extraordinary future. Hello, this is Dr. Nilda Perez, and I um, wanted to welcome you. Bienvenidos todo a Dr. Nilda Radio. Um, today I'm really excited because I'm coming to you from Austin, Texas. I'm in Austin, Texas. I've been here for about a week. I've been here about a week, and what um, I've been here and doing trainings. I've been I've been getting trained, and I've also been um, doing some talks. And I just wanted to let you know that um, you know what this can be done from anywhere. So we've been like tossing back and forth. How are we going to do it? And we were all like, there was just so much to do. But I'm really excited. First of all, my guest today is Rachel Calderon, and um, and we're here from Austin, Texas. Um, this again, this is different, and I'm I'm excited. I'm a little nervous because I've never done this from a different location other than the radio station. But you know what? This is going to be good. This is going to be good. We're we're going to make this work. And um, so here we go. As always, we want you to listen and participate. If you can talk to us on Facebook Live, send us your comments, your you know your statements, your questions. We're we're there. We're paying attention, and we want to hear what you have to say. Oh, I also want to talk to you about the worksheet. I want you to download the worksheet. So we're going to go right now into the training. I want you to download the, the worksheet, and the worksheet is on drnildaperez.com forward slash worksheet. Just as simple. DrNildaPerez.com forward slash worksheet. So that will be the, you know, that to me, I have found people that told me also that it really is the best way for um, for people to uh, to be able to follow the trainings. Because I can sit here and talk till, you know, till whatever. And it, and it doesn't, it's not as effective as when you're actually participating and, and taking down notes. So, Get, don't forget to download your your uh, Facebook, um, your worksheet. I'm sorry, your worksheet. So, anytime today we're going to be talking about strategy, and and mainly uh, I'm going to talk about strategies kind of vaguely, and then I'm going to hone it into marketing strategies, which is what Rachel does. Rachel is the the quintessential market strategist, and um, she's been very essential to myself and you know my my business and, and you know positioning us so um but I want to start talking to you and trying to explain to you what um what strategies are anytime that you want to succeed at something you have to have a game plan and this in business this game plan is called strategies so um what strategies means is a direction and a scope what direction are you going what companies will do over time. It will place, it would just, a strategy will place your business at an advantage. Um, cuando interesas ser exitoso, tienes que tener un, como se dice, un, un plan de juego. Estos se llaman estrategias. Y estas estrategias son las que van a llevarte a un éxito superior. Esto, en, en la dirección que tu negocio va, va a ir, depende mucho en las estrategias que tú tengas en, en so according to Michael Watkins, he's a, a Harvard Business Review contributor, he says that most leaders understand the importance of strategies. Yet when it comes to organizing, to organizing one, they become very bogged down. Even just developing the strategy can be very overwhelming. He states that it's because they're they become very confused about what strategy is. So cuando um cuando un contribuidor que se llama Michael Watkins, uh, que hizo un, un artículo en el Harvard Business Review, habló de la mayoría de los liderazgos de los líderes, tienen, uh, saben la importancia de estrategia, pero se, se confunden y esto porque su, no, no saben exactamente cómo implementar una estrategia. So moving along, when implementing strategies in your business, the one thing that you want to be certain is that you got it down pat. Uh, you know, uh, you want to be able to uh, be able to do this foresight strategy in a way that oftentimes, you know, again, oftentimes this becomes very overwhelming. 
So you really need to break it down to what your needs are, and we're going to go. I'm going to go into every single detail of, well, not every single detail, into many of the details, and definitely the most important details on knowing how to even begin implementing a, a marketing strategy. So, um, an outstanding marketer, an outstanding marketing strategy should be formed um, with market research. You need to research who who are these people that you're you're talking about. Uh, who are the who is your target audience? Who are the clients that would be your ideal client? Not the clients that you have to have, but the clients that you actually want. You need to have a strategy to be able to to get to that place. To be able to to um, what they call call. I was I do a um, I do a course that I teach on international business. And just this past week, we were talking about push and pull and Push has to do with you standing in front of a person or standing in front of a group and actually pushing your your whatever that may be. It may be your product or your service, and you're you're taught telling them, which is not a bad thing. But again, that takes a strategy because mostly what people want to know is what's in it for them, what is the benefit to them. So whatever service it is that you are, you know, you ask you're asking them to buy or to purchase or to become a member of, they need to know what the benefit is to them. That's the one way. The other one is pull. That's attraction. How do you pull this audience in? This audience usually comes in through things such as blogs and, and articles and, and even Facebook Live. You're talking to them. You're drawing them in. So they're coming to you because they're attracted to what you have to say. This is very important in business. This is very important in whatever it is that you want people to come to you. Um, churches are now changing their methods, and they are also using the poll strategy. They're doing this through having blogs, through having a dialogue with their parishioners or with potential parishioners. They're bringing them in through Facebook Live. They're bringing them in through radio. They're bringing them in through programming, all types of programming, including, uh, you know, uh, TV programs. So all of these things are very essential and they're very important for you to know in marketing. Las estrategias son muy importantes en el éxito de tu negocio. Tú tienes que atraer ese, 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 uh, tu, tu, tu cliente ideal, ideal, lo tienes que atraer y hay dos métodos. Uno es presentando y hablando con ellos y, y hablándole sobre su, su, producto o su servicio y el segundo es atraer a esa persona y mayormente por Facebook, cosas como Facebook, esto, los, los, el programa de radio, todas esas son estrategias que uno usa para por, poder atraer ese, ese cliente o ese cliente ideal. So, an outstanding marketing, what it does is that it's like a good resume. Uh, a really good resume explains and it puts you in the best light. It, but in that best light, it attracts this the potential employer. You are are actually explaining to them who you are, and people have become really genius with their with their resumes. And the more clever you are, the better you attract that potential uh, that potential employer. So. Think of your marketing strategy as your broad, putting your best foot forward and showing them your, uh, your, your potential, showing them who you are. So one of the things that you want to know is who is your ideal customer? ¿Quién es tu cliente ideal? Unfortunately, if you don't know who your ideal customer is, you're going to your marketing to this vacuum, to all of these people that may not necessarily be attracted to you because it's too vague. The more niche you are, the better you are. The better because the thing is that most people think that when you niche, oh that means that I won't attract anybody anybody else. You know what? There's nothing that people want more than what they can't fit into. Like wait a minute, why can't I have that also? So being niche actually puts you at an advantage. And most people don't realize that. So Afortunadamente, si no sabes quién es tu cliente ideal, eso uh, en tu marketeo va a ser un problema. 
porque no sabes exactamente a qué persona te estás enfrentando y atraer. Um, you see, strategy is really important. It, it's not as vague as you may see. It really is very, very key to anything, you know, to everything that you do. And remember, when you market, you know, don't discount this. People realize it and they just think, well, marketing is just for business. No. With your resume, you're doing marketing. You're marketing yourself. When you are, when you want to raise or when you want a promotion, that's marketing there. That is you showing people what you can do best. May that be your boss, your agency, you know, the, the leader. That's marketing. You are positioning yourself in a way that you're showing them what you do. And, you know, what happens is that you become very overwhelmed with your work and very overwhelmed with, like, oh, my goodness, the strategies is going to be so difficult. And that's not the case. So moving right along, um, you want to know what your client's biggest desire is. You want to know what problem they have that needs to be solved. Solving their problems is going to be key. People love, there's two things that they, they, they want. They want their problem solved, and they want their desires met. And in marketing, you have to be able to target just that way. So Matt, you have to imagine this strategic as a strategic decision. No matter how great you are or how awesome your business is, if people do not know what you do or how you do it, or even why you do it, no one is going to be attracted. So it's, it's taking that and breaking it down and being able to explain it. Remember, you're doing your job. You're doing the best worker. You have to do something that's going to stand you out. Because if you don't, you're just another employee. And it's not a bad thing. But if you want to be in the best light, you have to be able to market yourself in a way that what you're doing is making a notable there are several questions. There are several questions that I ask when I, when we're talking to clients. There are several questions that we ask them. Remember, I'm going to have like the master uh, of um, marketer coming on in a few minutes. So you want to know what are the three things that you need to master credibility? Because credibility is where you're going to be able to leverage. Um, que son la, los tres um, las tres cosas que tienes que, tienes que dominar. Eh, para, para crear esto, credibilidad. Uh, crea, Sorry about that. There are certain words that I am going to get twisted. So, one of them is authenticity. Ser auténtico. One of them is being knowledgeable. See, when people, when you know what you're talking about, people love that. They listen. They listen to people that know what they're talking about. So, you want to be knowledgeable. Estar informado en tu especialidad. Remember, we're not talking about a know-it-all. You are going to choose a niche, and you want to be very knowledgeable in that area, in that specific area. Um, you want to get social proof. You want to be able to get endorsements and testimonials. Other people that will say, you know what? She does do that. She is good at that. That's what you want. Dar pruebas social. Otras personas que, que, te, que digan, Que sí, tú has hecho eso por ellos. Ellos saben, ellos entienden lo que tú haces. Y eso, eso va a ser lo que le va, le va, te va a poner en una, en una posición totalmente distinta a tu a tu com, competida, competitividad. Okay? So, next question is, how are 21st century clients different? You need to know that we're dealing with a totally different client. That we were even as even as little as five years ago, people are different. People are not necessarily different in that they they made a drastic change, but consumers are different. You're different as a consumer. You do not buy today the same way that you bought five or ten years ago. So with that is in the diferencia de cliente de hoy día. Um, they're educated consumers. Right? When we go to purchase something, we don't just go to the store and say, oh, yeah, this is good. I'll take this. This is the price. We, we, price, we do price comparisons. We go on Amazon. We go on other, in other places that are going to give us the same thing, the same quality, but for either cheaper.
cheaper or a better or a better a better quality. So los consumidores de hoy en día son muy son muy educados. Um, they have more creative options. They don't want to be sold. They want to be drawn in. Ellos no quieren que tú vayas con ellos. El, el consumidor de hoy no quiere que tú le, le empujes tu producto, tu servicio. Ellos quieren ser, ellos quieren, atra, ellos quieren que usted lo atraiga. They, they want, they want satisfied. Quieren sus necesidades, satisfacer, satisfacer sus necesidades. And they want, they don't want to be dependent on you. Um, I, uh, I've been in a therapist also for many years prior to, to this you know, new track that I've been in like, for about six years now. Um, and the one thing is, and one of the things that I always did was I never, I always told my clients, I don't want you to become dependent on me. My idea was always show them what they need to do, show them a better way, and then, you know, just, you know, don't keep them dependent on you. So that is the one thing that, uh, you know, again, having a client for 10 years, it just never happened. Because the idea is always that they become independent. So when you're showing people your product or your service, you want them to be loyal customers. However, you don't want them to be, to feel, oh, you know what, this is, I'm so dependent on this. You want them to have choices. You want to give them different options, even within your company. So selling one thing, Maybe you want to sell five things. And what are the things that are comparable and what are the things that are complementary? Um, they want quality before they want prices. La calidad es mejor que los precios. Uh, you know, you give them something cheap that's cheap, they don't really want that. They would rather pay a little bit more and get a better quality. Um, so what are the two things that clients want? From you, as as the uh, from, from you the business owner they want engagement something that was never before that's why they have Facebook people want engagement they want to be able to have a conversation with you they want to be able to hear your you know they want you to be able to hear their complaints and their praises and I'll be honest with you oftentimes it's mostly praises that you get because you know what this product was awesome I love you know I love they want to be able to engage with you and they want you to respond. They want to believe that you care about them on a personal level. So just because they're in this vacuum and you may not know them personally, especially if you're selling things online or if you don't have that high touch factor in your business, you still want to be able to engage with your, with your client. They want to know, trust, and like you. And I know you've probably heard this over and over again, but ellos quieren conocerle, tener confianza y quererlo. They want to be able to have that, that almost that feeling of knowing you, much like it was when they had the mom and pop stores, the small stores, right? Uh, you would go in and these people know you on a personal level. They know your children. They know you well. So those are the things that the people want from you. And So this, this is going to end this segment of my training for today. Um, we're going to go now, we're going to stop for a few minutes, and we're going to go now to Rachel, uh, to Rachel Calderon. We're gonna, I'm going to be able to walk over. I want to walk over to the other side. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this here, I don't know if you're as fascinated as I am, but I have to tell you, I just find this home to be so awesome. Um, I rented a home for us for the few days that we were going to be here. Uh, in San Antonio, and this was like the best thing that I did. I, home is so welcoming. It's it's big. It's not too big. It's comfortable, and I just wanted to be. I want to be able to show you another part of this home. So um, here is uh, here's a little bit of, of the house, and you know the things that are available in this house. We have a full kitchen. We have a small dining room. We have this beautiful space that sits. And this is in here. We have a TV, which I honestly. I think we probably opened this once. Uh, we're not very, we're not very TV watchers. Nevertheless, we um, just to have this space is just has been such an awesome blessing. So you know we're thankful and uh, you know we're grateful to have this space. So now we're going to stop the video for a few minutes and we're going to go to phase two.
which is going to be equal to health. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Hello, and we're back. And today I have with me Rachel Calderon. Um, Rachel Calderon is also my sister, but um, I have to tell you, she I've seen Rachel actually grow in her business and grow in what she does for so many years, and she's come such a long way. I have to tell you, I'm excited and amazed. And I'm very excited to have her here with us today. So let me tell you a little bit about Rachel Calderon. Rachel Calderon um, founded Arts Digital Designs, um, I want to say maybe like five years ago. Um, she has a successful career in finance as a finance manager in the corporate world. She did that for many, many years. However, she also did, um, she always loved two things. She loved technology and she loved creating. And that was evident in everything that she did. So, um, so she started learning to, she learned on her own to be able to do digital designs, which is like websites and all, anything digital. She just started, you know, evolving in that area. And she did this as a personal interest. And from that, she actually perfected it to a, a tremendous degree. So Rachel has created a pathway to success and profitability. She has helped consumers maintain a strong online presence and with services such as customized web design, which is one of the things that she does. She does web hosting, she does e-commerce, automated marketing, SEO, email marketing, and social media marketing. And she's also almost like perfected Infusionsoft and she is going to be certified really soon as an Infusionsoft expert. If you know anything about Infusionsoft, CRM, it is a monster. And she has become, she's becoming the expert in this area. Rachel has a talent to take your business and catapult you to the highest level using, you know, a medium such as social media. She pretty much knows all of the platforms that she knows, which is the best platform for your particular business. Um, she's New York native. And right now she's a candidate in Full Sail University on getting her, because she doesn't know enough, her BA in um, in digital design. So I'm really excited to have her here with us today. And I know again, so and welcome Rachel. Thank you for having me. So Rachel, I have a bunch of questions for you. And you know, I know that a lot of this stuff we talk about all the time, but I just think it's really important to share it with the audience because you know, there's so much, you know, again, they're, they're, it's such a big monster and I see so many people using a lot of the technology, which is excellent, but they're not necessarily using it in the right way. And um, so I know one of the things that you have taught me, and first of all, I hated Facebook. It's just, it's such a nuisance and there was so much drama and I don't do really well with drama. I just rather turn it off. But Rachel showed me how to take it and actually use it for my benefit in terms of my business. And I have to tell you, it has been awesome because, you know, it really is engagement. Like I was talking about earlier, it, it's awesome engagement. And I, what I realize is that people have really, um, you know, they've, they really learned how to engage with me and have re I think they're really getting to know what I do through this medium. Mm -hmm. I can't have a conversation with a thousand people, but I can speak to one person. I can speak to a thousand people and everybody could feel that what I'm saying is resonating with them. And that, to me, that's, that's the beauty. So I want you to explain, because say we're only going to work on, we're only going to talk about the marketing, because honestly, the other stuff you do really well, but I guess maybe I'm already new to it, but this is, to me, the most fascinating part. It has really been the part that's really helpful to my business. So what is digital marketing? Because you hear these words, those words all the time. Right. Um, it is a term that we use in marketing uh, products and services using technology, uh, mainly obviously the internet and, um, and mobile devices. Um, this is a, a way that we can market to our, to our clientele yeah. using, using these mediums, you know. Um, and that's pretty much what marketing is. It's just to do, instead of, you know, direct mail marketing, we use um, digital marketing online. Okay. And then we just use multiple platforms. Now it can be in the form of like we like you just finished saying Facebook Live. Um, it, it's it, you can actually use uh, radio shows as yourself that you're using right now. Though that's all digital. Those are things that you you know that people don't get necessarily directly mm -hmm. in the mail. So their their TV is another form. Mm -hmm. um, you know Twitter. Th 
those those are all different engagements. Instagram. We were Instagram. Talking about, we were talking yes. about Instagram yesterday. And it's actually a really yeah. powerful tool. It, yeah. Yeah. Because pe what happens with uh, 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 form of uh, Instagram is those images that we put out. Sometimes you know we always say images are a thousand words. Mm -hmm. Well, that pretty much says it all. Okay. Images can say a whole lot, and um, sometimes people see it visually and understand it in visual form. So. Okay. So, so using these different platforms, you're pretty much um, connecting with the different ways that people learn. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, and, and I know we've, um, we've talked about that, which is one of them is audio, which is definitely not me. I do not hear, I don't understand anything that I hear. I just, I can't process. I think there's a lot of noise in my head and I can't, you know, I can't just focus. And, and when someone is talking, it doesn't, I can't process as well as, I can with a visual, and I'm more of a kinesthetic learner, which means I need to, I need to hear, I need to see, and then I actually need to implement, write, right. use, do, do something in order for that. I, I know I write a lot of notes, and and oftentimes um, I'm told, okay, so what are all these notes? Like, honestly, when I write it down, I can literally throw the note away because I'll remember. Correct, and that's why I had I had suggested to you that you use the worksheet. We had talked about the worksheet because right. of that reason, because there are some people who actually need to yeah, write notes need. down, but right. then there are people who just watching Facebook Live um, or just an image, they can they can process it. it it's all in the, in the matter of, you, you just want to use multiple mediums, digital mediums, so that people can process what you're trying to convey online. Okay, awesome. Okay. So should businesses be focusing, you know, only on social media? No, absolutely not. Okay. No, I, I, I think that, um, I think, no, not that I think, I know that all these mediums online are absolutely excellent. This is a way to be able, you use this to be able to get to more than one person around your circle. You see, you mm -hmm. on a Facebook Live, engage you can them. actually yeah. engage them, but you can actually attract them from, you know, more than just your, your neighborhood, right. yeah, by you know, more than you your local area. Local area. Right. You can get them right. from, you know, even outside of the country. I mean, we've right. had people from other countries no, I looking have. in. Exactly, so exactly. So other than, but, but direct, but, but something like direct mail, right. you have to have their their address and everything. So and this, they don't know you. And they don't know you, so they're not going to give that to you. So right. this is a way for you to be able to engage a really um social media is used just to engage people that's really what it's used for is to engage them to attract them to get them to know like and trust you uh build a relationship with them but okay. then you have to use direct mail marketing it's actually really important so right. should you just and, use and live you know live presentations like correct events, yes all of that. Okay. yeah so, so should okay. you just use social media no not just social media it, it's okay. much more than that okay. um you know, it's in, in, uh, what was that? I was going to say something else and I forgot. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I get it. So, so basically what you're saying is that, you know, just using one medium is still, it's just still pigeonholing. Because you know what? I hear a lot of, well, you know, um, you know, uh, traditional marketing is dead. Mm -hmm. And I know there are aspects of it that are not as effective, such as brochures. Like you get brochure, people get it and, and they just, you know, they put it down and then after a while they toss it. So I get that part. What I am trying to um, to get to is that now people have gone to the other extreme and they're using this, this other medium, which is social media, and they're just doing social media. And, you know, I, I realized, I know, I know when we were talking, you were like, I was like, listen, I have an opportunity for this radio show. And you were like, take it. And I was like, um, all right, I don't know. I don't have time for that. You're like, no, it's a marketing tool. And then you actually showed me all the things that can come out of that, and which totally surprised me because I was like, "Oh, I didn't think of that." Correct. Yeah. And and brochures are actually still useful. You just have to know when to use those brochures. And it's typically not in the front end. Correct. Okay. Awesome. So um, there's a lot of talk about using email marketing. Email marketing is this big thing, and I I remember, um, you know, we we talked about this and I've also um, I've learned from a lot of different people you know hey email marketing is the way to go and honestly um you know I really to me sometimes email is annoying 
because I get like, I have to tell you when, first thing in the morning when I turn on my computer, I have at least 150 emails from God knows what, who knows when, and I have to sift them out. So giving, sending me an email sometimes can be annoying unless it comes from somebody I really care about, an email that I want to read. So here are two questions. What is exceptional email marketing? And uh, what are the tools that are best that are best for email marketing? I want to start with the first question. What is exceptional email marketing? Well, exceptional email marketing is uh, what I call the customer life cycle. Um, and that is a way to be able to pull, to pull, capture, nurture, convert, deliver, uh, and satisfy, upsell, and refer, and, and do referrals. Okay. That, that is the most exceptional. You know, they, it's a process. It's a life cycle. It's like the circle of life that we've called it. That, you know, it, these are the things that you should do in email marketing. And, and that's how, and, and when a person um, opts into your email, this is how you should, this is the process of how you should keep them engaged. Not overloading them with junk, but nurturing them, you know, uh, uh, conveying the message, you know, uh, just giving them things that are helpful hints, tips, things like that, that will keep them, right. you know, opt in, that they won't, you know, opt out of your, your, um, your email marketing, you know, and right, that is right. exceptional. Because you're actually uh, giving them value, right. you're you, sending them something that's going to mean more than you know here is this you know and it's one of the things i get really annoyed by i get um i get all kinds of weird things on the whole facebook email um, um you get hit on you get you know like hey you know beautiful eyes make a smile or hey i have the solution to your problems and you don't even know what my problem is so that to me is like I can't, I can't just mm -hmm. stop it, you know. Well, so. but, and and that and that's the thing is when a person opts in to your email, it is important that you keep that email and and, and take you know really take care of it like a baby, you know. Well, Make sure are. that when you send right. information out mm -hmm. that it is it is good information, it is content that that this person can actually learn from. Mm -hmm. Sending a, a boatload of junk email, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're going to get somewhat agitated. So that's why nurturing them and then eventually converting them and deliver, and, and then also that also you have to deliver what you say you're going to deliver. You know, you right. want, because people say, well, you know, I'm going to give you 10 tips. They never send the 10 tips, but they'll send a lot of junk there. Right, right. You see, that's the so other that thing. you have right. to make sure that you're not spamming someone and, and sending them so much junk. Because that's how that that's how you're not you're, you're gonna lose that that person. Right. So if you're going to capture their attention and and you're going to promise them something, send that to them. Right. Send them what you're going to promise them. And if you want to continue to engage them, continue to give them content that is right. valuable to them. That makes perfect sense. Um, there are actual like emails. I have folders. Um. You know, I don't care, you know, even in my business email, it really all, it's, it's all Gmail because I love what Gmail has done with email. If you actually put things in folders and there are emails that come in and go directly into folders because these are emails that are very important um, to me. Um, one of, the, one of the, the greatest companies for me is the Association of Professional Future, which I'm a member of. Uh, everything that they send me is about foresight. Is it brings me value? I, uh, you know, I, I just love their emails. I love their emails. I love the newsletter. So anything, any email that comes from them, I, I share it. And if I can't read it at the moment, at least it's going to be in a folder. Mm -hmm. So that's the best part. At least it's going to be in a folder that I know. If I can't get to it right now, that's okay. I'll get to it. But I'm going to get to it. There's, there's undoubtedly. So I have several folders from several different you know, people that, that come up from some, several companies that come that to me are very valuable. Right. So that that's what you call exceptional email marketing. Correct. And that and that's what you want to do. You you want that person to want your stuff to the point that they, they can do like like Dr. Nilda does, that they put it in a folder and then they'll keep revisiting that because if it's right. if it's that valuable, right. that's what you want to give them. Exactly. Exactly. So my second question to, to that, you know, this, this kind of all goes into one question. So what are the best tools? What are the best tools to use for email marketing? Uh, well, I guess it all depends on your budget, really. Right. Because, um, but 
me personally, I, I prefer infusion soft. I have found that it has been the most robust CRM, which is a customer relationship management system. Um, you can actually do a, a life cycle with a customer life cycle with infusion so you can you can develop campaigns and then you know you can take them off of this one campaign and switch them to another campaign and just keep that engagement going all day all the time you know right. and you can actually have and you want to maintain that kind of relationship with them so i personally i mean you have things like hubspot you have uh probably a lesser uh, CRMs, but they're not as robust as web, web, oh my gosh, yeah. I forgot the name of it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, really it doesn't matter. matter. But, yeah. but the one that I re that I recommend is Infusionsoft. Uh, yeah, I've been with Infusionsoft now for a little, um, almost two years, actually, almost two, two, two years, um, in February. And I, you know, again, I, I love them. I love, you know, the fact that, you know, it, it's a lot of work in the front end. Yes, I yes. tell you in the front end when you were like, oh, you know, Nilda, you need to like write so many emails and you need to, I was like, oh my God, this is never going to end. And it was, so in the front end, it can be overwhelming. What I realized though, was the fact that, you know, the, the, what, the upkeep of the, of the client, like you said, or even that potential client is amazing. And, and I think it, it, it nurtures their needs. It gives them what they need. It gives them what they want. And that to me is is far none the best thing, right? For and for example, like um, you you sent out the um, we ask people to uh, your you ask people to opt in for the worksheets. Well, the great thing is that once they opt in for the worksheets, they automatically get it. After that, they they get it automatically, so they they won't have to continue to opt in every single time. It's just something that you have you have been able to maintain, and that's that's what's good about. This, like you said, the front end, the campaign part, making it up and, and, and making up the cycle and, and making sure that it was the hard part. But then once that was done, now it's taken a form of its own. That's something that we never have to, we don't really have to revisit unless we have to make some changes. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's taking a life cycle of its own. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the good part about And it's that. still personalized. Exactly. It's still very personalized. Exactly. So it's not like these random crazy emails that are being sent out. They're, they're actually, you know, again, they're very well thought out. And, right. and it's it's thinking of the individual. So right. so I find them to be more individualized more than anything else. Right. So I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that drives me bananas is, again, I told you, like I was saying earlier, is when I get that email that tells me, I'm going to solve your problems. You need to call me, blah, 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 whatever. And I get like a ton of those. I get them both in my email box. I get them on LinkedIn. I get them on you know, Facebook. You know, they're going to solve my problem, even if they don't know my problem, or even if I have a problem, they're going to solve my problem. So that, to me, is so irritating. So my question is, when should people talk about their product or service? And basically what that is, is sales. Like, I want you to buy this. And this pro this is going to solve all of your problems, you know, all the problems in the world, world peace, whatever, you know. So when should that product or service be introduced? Uh, I don't believe that you really need to introduce your product um, because when you're giving this person value, they're going to come to you. It's like, it's like when, you, when you go to a dealership, you see the car that you want. You already know you want that. You don't need someone to convince you that you want that car. You went there with purpose to buy a car. So you oh, don't need to, you yeah, know. Well, tell them that because I have to tell you that you go for this and they want to sell you that. Well, that is true because they're, they're pushing you to right. They Remember, they want to sell you something, but I, don't per, I do not believe in that. So I never recommend that anyone pushes their product. I think when you're giving that person value of what you do, even giving people tips, giving them tips. I know that, you know, it, it can kind of be controversial because people are like, well, you know, I don't want to give them something. I want them to pay. I want them to, to I want to charge them for it. Right. Well, sometimes you have to kind of work it around the opposite way. You got to kind of give them value and give people hints. You know, hey, listen, people ask me marketing tips all the time and I'll have, I give it to them. Right. But then right. when they find that, oh, I can't do that or, you know, it's too much for me, then they'll say, hey, let me ask you something. Um, what do you, how much do you charge? See, and right. I never pushed my product. I never pushed my product or my service. Right. Not once. Right. I was right. just, 
I was trying helpful. to be helpful. And I think that that is just a, a way for people to just say, you know what? She's not a pushy person. She's the, And they get to trust you and they get to like you and they get to believe in, in what you do because, right. wow, she's, she's so giving. She gives this and she gives that. And meanwhile, they're coming to me asking me. So it's easy to sell. I think that that's the best way. Right. I don't like pushy salesmen. I think that's cheap. Right. And not only that, it's, it, they, 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 you know, I mean, again, they want to they wanna get married before they even date you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's yes. like, hi, my name is, and, you know, let's let's just do this. And that, to right. me, that is, it's so horrible. I just can't stand it. It's so, to me, it feels invasive, and I can't stand it. I just can't, you know, very, very private. I, I People have to be, you know, I feel people need to be welcomed into my space. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel it's such an invasion of privacy or an invasion of, or, or so um, presumptuous that they would think that, oh, she has a problem and this is the problem that she has because this is the one they solve. Right. And that, I, I just can't. I just can't. So right. I think, um, and that's what has made me very cognizant, the same way that I don't like to be sold, I am very cognizant of my clients. Right. And, and two two yeah, things same. and yeah. two things I'll say is always give them value, but showing them the benefit to them. And secondly, educate. Always educate and inform absolutely your I love that. Yeah, though that to me yeah. is the key. I love that. Yeah. Because you know, yeah, I'm an educator at heart. I'm always you know, I love to teach, I love to guide. And to me that that instruction is awesome. I love it. Okay, so the next question is, should people do their own marketing? I think um, that is like this, you know, million dollar question because a lot of people do it, do it very well. A lot of people do it and do it very bad. And then there were those that do some things well and some things not so well. So my, my question is, on, you know, on average, should people be doing their own marketing? Well, I'm not going to say no, that they should not. And I'm not going to say that they should 100%. It, it all depends on what you're, what what is most valuable to you. Is it more valuable for you to spend time doing your work? Or or is it time, or is it more valuable for you to market? Which one? And, and that's where you have to kind of, you know, depending on the type of job you do, really, you have to figure out for yourself what is it that you want to spend most of your time doing? Um, such as yourself, you have come to the conclusion that I can't do what I do right. plus market. So right. you then in turn had hired, you hired me right. to do your marketing. Right. And, you know, and even still you, you put out things and you'll share and you'll do a little bits of things for yourself, that, that you but nothing. Exactly. Well, I always yeah. tell her what, what to do, what but to the do. point is yeah. that is, yeah. is, She'll do some things that is yeah. easy to her, mm -hmm. but she tries to spend most of her time working and doing and developing the content, right. being able to develop curriculums, to be able to develop because that to me is the best use of my time. Um, and and doing it any other way for me doesn't really work. Right. For me, it doesn't work. Now, mar and, mar and marketing, you you should actually spend time, uh, money on. You should you I believe yes. that you should spend money have a budget on and marketing. have a budget for marketing because yeah. that's going to help your business in the long run. Well, it bring it just and that's where I saw the value. Um, there are aspects of of marketing that I absolutely love. There's no doubt. I love. I think it's it's fascinating. I I, I enjoy it. Um, I like knowing about it. However, so we have we have questions and and I'm so excited about that. So let's answer the question. The question is from Rosalina Vega. Rosalina Vega wants to know how often should you post your social media page without having people remove themselves because of the amount of notifications they receive? That's a fabulous question. Love it. So wait till answer that question. Um, well, it, you know, it all, it all depends on what, what you're bringing to the table. If you're bringing them value, uh, it, you know, Facebook, Facebook has this, this little trigger that they can be notified. Um, and, and actually, I guess I, I also have to ask Pro Selena is where, what do you mean by they're, they're taking themselves off of the page is what she's saying? Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so can we take a couple of steps back, Rachel? Can you explain to people what value is? Because I have to tell you, the one thing that I hear is that there, there, there's a lot of these um, 
words, these you know, all these catchphrases. But you know what? The honest truth is that what exactly is value? I want you to explain because if people don't understand what value is, they're gonna have a hard time doing that. Uh -huh. Well, value is pretty much giving them some type of training on on what they do best. You know, on, on what they do, what their business is. Um, for example, um, when I, when I write, I always give them a marketing tip, or I give them a marketing quote, or I, I give them something that can that can bring them value that they can actually use. Um, a person. Okay. So so let me ask you a question. So. Um, somebody, and I, I think I, I, I want to, I want to be able to give Selena a, a, a tip. One of the things that I know that she does several things, but I think one of the things that she mostly markets is jewelry. I think, um, one of the best ways to give people value with that is, um, finding a little bit of history on jewelry. Where, exactly. where did it start? Like who was the first person who ever created this? I know this goes back to like maybe the Egyptian days, but who knows, maybe further than that. And to be able to give them these um, FAQs, you know, these, these, the, maybe it's not an FAQ, like these uh, inquisitive, uh, uh, you know, inquiries that you are actually doing research and showing them, you know, this was where this started and this is what it was and this is what it looked like. So doing some research uh -huh. and actually giving is like, wow, I, I didn't know that. That's yes. going to capture their attention rather than buy this, buy this, buy this. And, right. you know, again, and I don't think people do it intentional. I don't think that, you know, it's just, again, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So, it, like you were saying, finding the history of, for Rosalina, finding the history about jewelry is really, really, it, and as a matter of fact, it's interesting. Yes. Because then you're going to bring them something that they're like, wow, I never thought of it that way. I never and knew that. I never or, knew that or, you know, something to that effect that will help them to really understand the meaning behind jewelry. I, I mean, I think it's fascinating. My, my daughter's into art history. She loves art. She's a graphic designer. So when I look at art, we both look at art differently. But I find, I mean, she sees art in a whole different way than I do. But I find... The, the meaning of art or the beginning, like back in the Egyptian days, right. very, very interesting. Yeah. So she educates me that way. And then I find it fascinating when I'm- Because now you're this, seeing it differently. Yeah, like It's not just, oh yeah, nice colors, or that looks really old, you right. know, but you're actually seeing a value, you know, she's bringing you back. Exactly. In, in teaching you what that is, what does it mean, and, and what, because now you're taking, you're taking this class, but you're mm -hmm. seeing this class with, with very, you know, fresh new eyes because you have an insight that was never there before. Right. You know? Exactly. Right. Okay. So that, so that is the best thing. So now going back to her question, how often should she, should she post is what she's asking? Yeah. Because I don't think the, the issue is the posting. Yeah, I don't think your issue is posting. I think is like we we're saying bringing value, bringing value about the history of of. Let's start there. Bring let's start there. Yeah, right. just start bringing value about the history of jewelry and see where that goes from there. Right, right. I think that's a good place to start, and then you know, then other things, other things that she can give value other than this is, you know, what is selling, and that goes for yeah. anybody. This is what I'm selling. This is how much it is. Sell. This is you yeah. know. Just right. you know, bring different bring different things that different will ideas that will help that your your customer. Right. You know. Okay. Um, Fabulous. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So my next question um, is probably this is gonna be my last question. Yes. Um, what is a reasonable time frame to spend on marketing? You know, what is the effective you know, for it to be effective? Because you know, again. This, I want to this I have to make this a two part because also what exactly is marketing hanging out in Facebook and answering you know you know friends or that's not marketing no that's okay. not marketing and Twitter and tweeting all that's not marketing no. so so literally on marketing what is a reasonable time to spend okay well marketing the most effective this it would be about twenty I would say about twenty hours a week. 
Four, four about four yeah. hours daily, and yeah, and again, it, it's not it's not necessarily spending time on Facebook or social media. I'm talking about time uh, developing content. Um, this research. is all research. These are all different things on marketing. It's not just you know sitting there for four hours uh, answering questions and just chatting online. No, I'm talking about chatting online if if need be. Or answering a question if need right. be, right. or you know, but mainly developing content all the time. Con right. and, and and marketing could be in the form of blogging, like we I believe you said that earlier. Blogging is important. These articles. are things art, articles, uh, reading, even doing research for yourself. That's all a part right. of marketing, uh, mm -hmm. um, developing a strategy. You know, because right. again. Things change on a daily basis, so it's good to kind of keep up with the with the latest trends. It's it's crucial. It, it's yeah. it's crucial to your yeah. business if you want mm -hmm. to continue to do what you love. Right, right. So you have to be creative, and and what does that take? It takes time to create, right, and research and right. and and uh, develop, right. You know, right. and and being and being well read. I know that's one of the things that I and and I know that I'm like this lifelong well student, and I'm probably like. Probably more, a heck of a lot more dorky than most. But the truth is that I have, I find that I'm always learning, and so by my learning, I'm better for my clients mm -hmm. because the more I know, the better I can inform them, the better I can inform them, the better they are at what they do. Exactly. So, so it's it's so it's it's a cycle. It's it's a cycle. So, um, the beauty of learning is that I'm not just doing this for myself, but I'm also doing it for my clients. Mm -hmm. Because the better I am, the better I am for them. So, yeah. Um, well, this kind of this is going to end today's session, which to me has been fascinating and exciting and awesome. And I love the fact that I'm doing this from San Antonio, which is great. I think that's a, the most fascinating part. I have to tell you, I was trying to figure out how on earth I was going to do this. And although the radio show did not pan out because, again, there was so much going on and I had. I had two speaking engagements. I had um, I had a, a training that I that I'm at. I have this training that she's at. I there's there's like so much going on, and I was uh, all of a sudden, you know how I'm a legend in my own head, and I, I I thought I could do all of this, and then realized, oh my God, I really can't. So we're gonna get back to our conference, which is down the road, and um, before I go anywhere, I want to have you come back. Next week is gonna be live. From the from the studio, I have um I'm gonna have Dr. Alaluz uh, Gonzalez, and she's absolutely off the chain. You're gonna see this woman is brilliant. She is fun. She is sweet. She's Cubana. She is she is and she's international. She has studied all over the world. She is a fascinating person. You're gonna love her. I want to thank you for being with us on Business Foresight, always creating strategies towards an extraordinary future. Remember, I'm here with you with strategies every Saturday. I'll see you next week.